Okay, this video is talking about rotational equilibrium. And in rotational equilibrium, we're interested in something called torque. And torque occurs when you apply a force in a direction which is going to cause a rotation. Okay. And torque is symbolized by this Greek letter tau, and it's equal to force times distance. Okay, So the amount of force you apply will increase the torque, but also the distance away from the point of rotation. So obviously in this diagram, this object will rotate around this point. So force A is this far away from the point of rotation while force B is much further away. So the bigger the distance, the larger the torque, and that should make sense. Hopefully most people realize that you would want to uh, apply your force at this end of the wrench to try and make it easier to turn uh, this bolt or nut. So torque is equal to force times distance. So obviously the units that we're looking at here are newtons times meters. Uh, and that doesn't simplify, we just put it as so many newton meters. You could also write it as meters times newtons. Coincidentally, if you're not using the uh, metric units, uh, most often what the unit for torque is foot-pounds. So quite often, especially if you're watching American TV stations and you're hearing uh, uh, truck commercials, they'll talk about how many foot-pounds of torque the engine uh, puts out. And basically it's the same idea, right? Feet is a measure of length and pounds is a, is a measure of force, right? It's a weight. So foot-pounds are the uh, uh, American standard for torque. And if you buy a torque wrench or anything like that, it might give you a, a reading of foot-pounds. So the amount of torque is proportional to force times distance. Now the other thing that they don't really tell you, especially on the formula sheet, is that the torque um, has to be at a right angle to this axis where the rotation is. So the force, sorry, has to be acting at a right angle. If the force is not acting at a right angle, then the force that we are interested in is only the perpendicular component. So only the perpendicular component of the force is important. So really what the torque is, is F times cosine of whatever angle the force is acting at times d. Okay. So don't forget that only the perpendicular component of the torque of the sorry only the perpendicular component of the force uh, uh, contributes to the amount of torque. Okay, let's look at a, a very common type of question. So this is a, a basic seesaw. You can imagine uh, two people sitting on each end. Uh, I have blocks. So a six kilogram block at this end, if I take my eight kilogram block and put it right on the end here, obviously the seesaw is gonna go down on this side. But what I wanna know is where should I place this eight kilogram block so that it's in equilibrium, okay? Well, this type of equilibrium is called rotational equilibrium. And what we want is again, that the sum of all of the torques have to be equal to zero. And for torque, because it's a rotational uh, situation, what we're interested in is the torque that's going clockwise around this, so in this direction, the way a clock turns, or counterclockwise. So really what we want is all of the torques in the clockwise direction to be equal to all of the torques in the counterclockwise direction. Okay. So in the clockwise direction, our 8 kilogram block is probably going to be here somewhere. And its gravitational force, its weight, is pushing down. And that weight is acting some unknown distance d from the point of rotation. Remember that distance in the torque is always the distance from the point of rotation. So that's Fg1. We have another force of gravity on this side which is acting uh, as, as another uh, distance away. Okay. Now, this distance here um, we'll assume is half the length. So let's suppose the distance from here to here um, 
from end to end is let's say five meters. So this distance would be approximately two and a half meters. A little bit less with the width, but we'll, we'll, not, we'll ignore the width of the block for now. So in the clockwise direction, I have FG1 times D is equal to the torque in the counterclockwise direction, which is going to be FG2 times uh, the length of this object over 2, the length of the seesaw. And right, so this is FG2. So now we can start substituting in and solving for our unknown value, which is D. So our first torque is the weight of the 8 kilogram block. times the distance that that force acts. And on the other side, we have the weight of the six kilogram block and it's acting again at 2.5 meters from the pivot point. So we've written an equation now, the only unknown is D and what we find is it's 1.9 meters from the pivot. So that's a basic rotational equilibrium question. Um, if you take a look at some of the other example questions from the textbook, you'll see they get more complicated with multiple masses or asking us where the pivot should be located. Obviously, if the 8 kilogram block was right on the end, we would want to move the pivot closer to the 8 kilogram block. Okay, if you have any questions about rotational equilibrium, you can ask me in class and try out some of the practice problems from the textbook.